This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today I'm going to show you how to get a hold of onion seeds before you've even beaten the elder. Let's get to it. So I know there's a lot of people out there who are complaining that they've made this game a lot harder with the Hearth and Home update and uh, I don't think that's true. If anything they've made the game significantly easier with the new systems that they have in place with blocking and with the food to the point where you can handle a majority of the stuff that you're going to run into when you go into the mountain biome in bronze armor. Now one thing that they have done with hearth and home is you need to be much more prepared than you had to be in the past. You could run around in bronze armor or even tier one iron armor and be just fine in most cases. You didn't really have to worry about upgrading it, although it was a good idea because it just made you more OP, but you didn't really have to. You could run around with just basic armor and still be really strong. Now with the changes to hearth and home, upgrading your stuff is even more important. So today I'm going to show you how you can handle going into the mountain biome as early as bronze tier stuff. So you don't even have to beat the elder in order to do it. You can even go into the swamp in the bronze tier stuff. Uh, we don't even need iron to do any of this. So you can see here I have the anvils on this forge and I have the cooler and I upgraded my armor to tier 3. So we have bronze armor here. It's been upgraded to tier 3. I don't need anything to do that, anything special to do that, that I can't get in bronze tier without beating the elder. Now, unfortunately, the bronze buckler is our only option for a shield that's gonna be able to handle what we need it to do because the next one is the iron and I wanna show you how to do this without getting any iron. Now, why do you wanna get onions this early? That is because onions are super efficient and crazy OP. So the sooner you are able to get them, the better. Why are they so strong? Because they give you one less health than what the Queen's Jam gives you. They give you the same amount of stamina, and this is just eating a raw onion. Gives you the same amount of stamina at 40, and it lasts for 15 minutes. Gives you one HP per tick. Now while the Queen's Jam will last a total of 20 minutes and gives you two HP per tick, uh, you can just easily plant the onions and eat them. It's not like it's a resource that, it's a renewable resource, so eating more of them more often it doesn't really matter because you can just plant a massive garden of these things and have tons and tons of onions the other thing is the onion soup you can make the onion soup once you get turnips and you upgrade your cauldron you need a level two cauldron in order to do that you can get a level two cauldron by making a spice rack if we take a look over here for the spice rack you need dandelions carrots mushrooms thistle and turnips all of those things, with the exception of the turnips, you can get in the first two biomes, so the for the meadows and the forest. For the turnips, you will need to go to the swamp, but with what I'm gonna show you here, you can handle stuff in the swamp. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a full set of bronze armor and that it is upgraded to the max that you can get, which is level three without iron. Same thing with your bronze buckler. Max that bad boy out to tier three. For foods, you are going to use the minced meat sauce, just cook deer meat and the queen's jam. The minced meat sauce is super cheap. It's gonna cost you one boar meat, one necktail, and one carrot. While the boar meat and the carrots are farmable, the necktail is not, but Going out and harvesting your necktails is going to be more than worth it because this is going to give you 45 health and 15 stamina, lasting 20 minutes with 3 HP per tick regen. The cooked deer meat is going to give you 35 health, 12 stamina, last 20 minutes, and 2 HP per tick regen. And then you are going to use the Queen's Jam for your boost in stamina, giving you 40 stamina, 14 health, last 20 minutes, and it's going to give you an additional 2 HP per tick. That's going to give you a total of 6 HP per tick regen. Okay, so I've turned off God Mode. I'm going to eat one of each of these foods. You can see that that's going to give us a total of 119 health and 117 stamina. So what about taking on the Swamp? What about taking on Draugr? So here we have a Draugr, and we're going to give him a second to notice us here. So with this, we can easily parry an attack from a Draugr and take him out with no problem. Draugr are not an issue at all. So I spawned in another Draugr here and I'm actually just going to hold block with the buckler and let him hit. And you can see we can handle that as well. So even if you're not good at parrying an attack, uh, you can still use the bronze buckler to just block. Ideally with the bronze buckler, you want to always 
parry. You don't want to just hold block. If we take a look here, you can see our block armor is only at 31. Now, my block skill is not super high. We're only at 18. If we parry with it, we get a 2.5 bonus, but you can use it to actually block. And if we do that, you will see that I actually don't stagger. We have enough health that I can block and take a full hit and not stagger. So if we drop down here and I parry, you can see there, we barely took any stagger damage at all. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. And that would be enough time for us to take on that wolf. Now, of course, if you run into a pack of these guys, you're probably going to die. Now, that's uh, the situation in most cases with them. Uh, that's just the nature of wolves. Even if we were high tier armor, it's still possible to easily die from a pack of wolves. So we're gonna drop down here and I'm gonna show you if we block, there we go, we staggered him and we killed him and we barely took any damage. I know I did take a hit there, but as you saw, we have enough health that even with this armor, we can take a full hit from the wolf and not stagger, even if I'm not blocking. So here we go, we have a wolf. I'm just gonna let him hit me once so that I can show you. There's a full hit. We don't even stagger with a full hit, even if we're not blocking. Now to tackle the mountain biome, you are going to need the frost resist mead. In order to do that, you are going to need blood bags. As I showed there, you can easily handle the Draugr, but let's head on over to the swamp and I'm gonna show you, you can pretty much handle everything in the swamp. Here we are over in the swamp and we have some leeches here. And one thing I've noticed is that they changed leeches in this game with hearth and home update. We also have a skeleton. We're gonna make super short work of him. And for the leeches, they don't attack like crazy now. So if we come over here, I may, yeah, see, I can even hit them at a bit of a distance here. And we can block and parry their attacks way easier now. So I think we weren't close enough there. There we go, we, uh, we parried him. But because of our high armor and the fact that armor reduces poison damage now, we can take those hits and we're relatively fine. So there we go. We just got our two blood bags. That's gonna make our six mead that we need. Now, you do not wanna keep getting hit by the leeches because when they poison you, they now refresh poison stacks and it will refresh the poison damage on you. You wanna let that wear off before you decide to jump back in there and fight some more. But here, I mean, here I am in the swamp with this bronze armor and as you can see, I'm not having too much issues. Now, once you've been over in the swamp a little bit and you're hunting those blood bags, you're probably also going to have killed some Draugr and gotten the stuff that you need in order to make sausages. And hopefully you have your turnips as well so that you can make your spice rack because you're gonna need those turnips as we discussed in order to make the spice rack in order to upgrade your cauldron so that you can make the mead. Once you've done that, you will also be able to make sausages. Now, while this combination of food here should allow you to handle handle everything that you're gonna run into while you're in the mountain biome, I do recommend swapping out at least the cooked deer for the sausages. The sausages will give you a significant boost to your health once you mix them with the minced meat sauce. And you can also upgrade to the carrot soup if you are farming carrots at this point, which you probably should already be farming carrot. I mean, those are one of the first things that you start farming. And the carrot soup will give you 45 stamina. It's gonna give you five additional stamina from the queen's jam. It's not a whole heck of a lot and it's only one additional health. You don't necessarily have to do it. Uh, you can honestly go up there with this setup too, but if you wanted to get max possible stats that you should be able to get at this point, uh, this would be your setup. So here's what that looks like. That's gonna give you 140 health and 128 stamina. And because I know someone is gonna jump down there in the comments and tell me I'm wrong, that is not your best option for the highest stats possible. Technically your best option for, well, it wouldn't be a set of highest stats. It'd be the better option for rounded stats and max health without going full meat because you never go full meat would be black soup, sausages, and carrot soup. But there's only a five health and a two stamina difference between black soup and the minced meat sauce. And the black soup 
takes a blood bag in order to make it. And at this stage in the game, you would be better saving any extra blood bags you have for additional frost mead because there could be a chance where you run out of all of your first set of frost mead and you need additional frost resist mead. And if you use all of your additional blood bags on black soup, you could end up with a situation where you got to go back to the swamp and grind even more leeches, which seem to be a little fewer than they were before Hearth and Home. So you're better off saving those. That is why I recommend going with something like this, the mincemeat sauce, sausages, and carrot soup. So ideally what you're going to do is you're going to kind of skirt around the outside of your mountain biome and look for any structures before you just run up in there all willy nilly. Now you're probably going to run into a bunch of these structures around the edge here, but these aren't going to have what you're looking for. You need the structures that are all the way up inside of the mountain biome and you should be able to see them depending on what your view distance is set to as you kind of just run around the edge here. You can get a little bit up in there if you start to run into issues where you are taking frost damage or cold damage, then just eat your mead and just kind of hang out a little bit. But this allows you to not run into large packs of wolves or you shouldn't. You also shouldn't run into too many drakes or anything like that. Now at this stage, I don't really recommend running into drakes. As you see, we just ran into a single wolf over there and uh, he didn't even notice us, but he did notice uh, those graylings. But I do not recommend fighting anything in this biome that you don't have to. If you can manage to avoid fighting the wolves, then just don't do it. Uh, if you run into a drake, just run away from it. But you need to look for structures. That is where you are going to find the onion seeds. If you do not spot any, you will have to get all the way up inside the biome. But here is a structure right here. And you can see we just ran into a skeleton. So let's uh, block that and make short work of him. And there should be a chest here. Here we go. We got a chest. Let's see. Yep. Right there we go. So we got onion seeds. So we were able to do that with no problem at all. We didn't even run into any wolves, nothing like that. Uh, wasn't an issue and we were able to handle it because we have our frost mead. So we were able to get up in here. Now, just in case you do run into a wolf, I want to show you, I'm going to run back here to where we saw that one. Here we go. We have a single wolf here and we parry him and we go in for an attack there we go we took one hit ideally i should have parried twice but uh yeah it's fine we got it now you can also run an archer build i don't recommend running two staminas and run one health i would do an archer build with what we have running what we have running right here Because as you see there with that second wolf attack, it gives us plenty of health and plenty of stamina to do pretty much whatever we want. But if you have uh, good bow skills, you should be able to snipe the wolves from a distance and kill them before they get to you. But that mainly depends on your current play style. Uh, you do leave yourself vulnerable if you are just running a bow. I highly recommend coming up in here with a shield and some type of melee. It's going to be a lot easier on you and you'll probably die a lot less uh, because you have more defenses than what you have with a bow. Another downside to running with a bow because of the nature of the mountains, it's kind of hard sometimes to spot wolves before they spot you. Now, if you do manage to get the drop on them, it should be possible to one shot them. Yeah, there you go. So if you do get the drop on them, it is possible to one shot them with a bow. But once again, I don't recommend it. Now, one last thing, if you do want to run a lot of stamina, you can go sausages, carrot soup, and Queen's Jam. That's gonna give you 109 health and 153 stamina, which is still enough to parry an attack from a wolf. So you can see there, we're able to parry his attacks. Well, we even took a full hit there and it didn't fill our stagger bar until we took the second one. So yeah, you should be fine uh, with 109. In most cases, 100 health can 
handle a single target without any issues when it comes to being staggered. And that's gonna give you much more stamina to work with, but it is going to leave you far more squishy if you do end up taking hits. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to give an absolutely massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Leecro Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.